Good afternoon, guys. This is your, I'm your host, Nick. I'm Mihaly. And I'm Manoli. And welcome to the 18 Podcast to talk about the stuff we want to talk about. How are you guys? I'm good. I'm fine. Yeah. Been. The weather's been um, good lately, hey? Oh, yeah, it is. It's, I, it's, it's beginning the dry season. Yeah, it's changing. Yes. Thank no God. more rain. No more rain, yeah. Yeah, this year's pretty, it's pretty wet, hey? Yeah, I, I agree with that. Y- yeah. And what do you guys want to talk about first? I'm not ready to share my topic yet. I think you guys need to start up first, okay? Like, um, okay, we can talk about, oh yeah, movies and TV series. So, well, Mahali, you... what about Metaverse? Metaverse, um, I don't know anything about your Metaverse. Well, the Metaverse is supposed to be, um, I think I can bring it up. Yeah. Now, the Metaverse is supposed to be this sort of an, um, uh, world where people would go into that digital world and interact with other people and stuff and you put on your virtual reality but it's not just that but then when the stronger the technology gets you know the things will be more of a thing of course Uh uh-huh the metaverse the metaverse okay um yeah exactly what you said on in google have you ever tried the metaverse? No, not really. Okay. Is that, is that everything what you want to say about metaverse? Oh, yes. I mean, it's a real thing, of course. It's not a fan. It's just it's a thing that people are tr- trying to do, of course. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, I didn't... I don't know. I got nothing up now, but I don't really know about anything well, about metaverse, well, but thank th- you for explaining. But there is one thing I will share is that... Um, Let's say now, remember back in the days, all of us used to like fall in love with cartoon characters from TV series and stuff? Uh-huh. Like, Nick, is was there any um, female cartoon character that you had a crush on? Mm, I can't remember particularly. It, if you don't... It, uh, I, actually, I actually did like Natiri from Avatar. Yeah. Same. Well, the thing is, now, even though we all understand it's that they just joins are not real, but... Mm-hmm. In reality, now eventually, when it comes to metaverse, people will definitely get to meet their characters and interact with them. Like for example, um, for those who want to meet Beavis and Butthead, mm-hmm. meet them at the metaverse, despite that they're AI, but they are drones. But you are gonna meet them. Okay. Hmm, okay. And even move stuff around. And yes, that's another. That's the weird thing. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Shall we move on the topic or? Oh, yes, yes. So I think Mihaly and I want to talk about um, movies and TV series, right? Go ahead. Yep. There were two recent movies we watched. Yep. Godzilla and Kong, The New Empire and Kung Fu Panda 4. Mm-hmm. What do you want to talk? Which movie you want to talk first? Um, Godzilla and Kong. All right. Sounds good to me. I'm going to start with you, Mihaly, first. Yep. What What is your thought what is your thoughts about Godzilla and Kong when you watched the movie? It, 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 it was good. good. It was a good movie. I enjoyed it. But the part I don't like was um, Kong had a toothache. Yeah, and he had to remove his tooth and get a... A, a, a metal tooth. Yeah, for a replacement. Yeah. Were you comfortable in the cinemas, Mahali? No. No. I, I wasn't comfortable of the, of the cinemas. Oh, I- I, why can they just make the cinema more luxury and stuff? Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure in the some in the interstate you get the comfortable ones. Yeah, but sometimes when you go in the cinema, there's some people who are um, like being silly, like making noises and and muck around. Yep. Anyway, um, speaking talking about the Godzilla. Godzilla and Kong review. I actually do like the movie. It's pu- it's, I, I find it very entertaining. Same. I think they did one thing they did approve is having less screen time for the with the humans. Mm-hmm. Because I don't really care about the humans. Me too. And they showed more focus on on the monsters. The Titans, yeah. Yeah. I do like to put um. 
Godzilla got an upgrade though. Yeah, he he becomes evolved. Yeah, I, and I like it when they showed more focus on the Titans. Especially they show more focus on Kong and Suko. Yeah. Like like shown in the screen time when where they were bonding. Mm-hmm. At the start, um, how Kong Remember how Suko attacks Kong? Yeah. Oh yeah, you know what's a little fun, funny part in my opinion? When Kong grabs Suko as used as a weapon and gets the apes. Yeah. That was funny. Wait. Grant me one last request. Let me say farewell to my wife and kids. Please. Did you gosh? I didn't know you had a family. I'll show that the that the screen with, with the scene with Suko and Kong, it the it reminds me how the relationship with um Kratos and Atreus. Yeah. Don't you think? Mm-hmm. You know one thing that I find a bit hot I I like the heartwarming. I find it heartwarming. When Godzilla helped that ape. Yeah. That poor ape. God No, when Kong helped the ape. Yeah. But I find it funny when the when that ape um, I think he was just telling off telling yeah. Kong off. And Kong punched him in the face. Uh, that's how I find it funny. Yeah, same. Also, I didn't like the part that Scar King was actually making fun of his tooth, though. Yeah, I don't. I don't like that part. And all the apes were laughing. Yeah. What do I think about Scar King as a villain? Um, my. F- I, I didn't really like him as a villain, to be honest. Me too. He's actually physically weak. He's actually weak against yeah, Kong. Yeah. He, I mean, he's got his ass kicked like three times. Yeah. Thrown off once in the first fight. Mm-hmm. And got punched punched in the face twice. Yeah. Because he knows that he's no match for Kong, so he has to get um Shuma to do, to freeze his arm. Yeah. And he's got a frostbite. Yeah. You know what I wish that they could have improved? Having I wish the the fight scene was a bit longer. Yeah. This is where the part was is a little bit rushed. You know, speak, speaking of the fight scene, guys, uh, this is a very similar thing of what contradicted with Wolverine, of course, where when it came to the Wolverine, when he goes to Japan, I was expecting, you know, there will be more violence and gore. And all of a sudden when I saw the film, it was mm-hmm. like, okay, what's this? They didn't include that much violence. Yeah. So, what is that? I just I actually find Shuma interesting. Yeah, same. Because we all find out that Shuma is not evil. Is actually not evil. No. She was just being abused by Scar King. Yeah. And being more controlled from the crystal. <clears throat> yeah. Treat, treating her like a slave. Like an abused dog. Yeah. Pretty much like a like an. A dog's being abused. Yeah. By an asshole owner. Yeah. And actually, Scar King treats his kind like trash. Yeah. You know what I find a bit very human with when it comes to when it comes to um Scar King, he laughs. Yeah. How he behaves like a when he laughs and pointing at Kong. Yeah. Oh yeah. Speak. Oh, one thing I liked. Um, I did like how Martha returns, though. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I was expecting that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it did show a lot of spoilers. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Also, I do. Also, there are going to be Funko Pops, though. Yeah. I I want to get Shumo. Same. That's a Funko Pop and the Here Toys. Yep. The action figure of Shumo. Shall we like yeah. go to the, the next topic of yeah. the movies and TV series? Hang on, yeah, I gotta talk about Comfy Panda because we haven't talked about Comfy Panda yet. All right, I'm gonna move on. Also, we did watch um Comfy Panda four um last weekend, right? Yeah. My thoughts? I didn't like it, in my opinion. Yeah, me neither. I'm not a Comfy Panda fan. No. Right, fair enough. Um. Some reason that the the story was felt rushed. Yeah. 
the jokes were pretty forced. It's like a forced jokes. They had to put out like forced jokes. Yeah. And I hate the part where Dra- Poe was forced to. Poe is forced to to retire as a dragon warrior and pick the new his replacement. Yeah, that was dumb. Yeah, and I hate the part where the vil- two villains who returned, Kai and Lord Shen, they didn't even talk. Yeah. And there was not much interesting fight scenes. Yeah. And I actually find the chameleon weak, a pretty weak villain. Yeah, same. The reason why she's a villain, because she got rejected. She got rejected from Kung Fu schools for being too short, which is stupid. Yeah. Because Mantis is the smallest Kung Fu master. Yeah. So, I think Kung Fu Panda 4 was worse than Kung Fu Panda 3. Yeah. I only like Kung Fu Panda 1 and 2, that's it. Same. Full end of story. Yeah. Yeah. But I did like how Tai Long returns. Same. But but sadly, we don't see him much more f- having fight scenes with him. Yeah. We only see, we only see like halfway, I think it was like halfway to see um, Tai Long returns. Stupid. Yeah. All right, I want to move on from this because I didn't really like it. Uh, Comfy Panda Four. Go to the Shogun that you want to discuss. Oh yeah, that's that's an that's an interesting part. So I want to tell you about Shogun. Shogun is basically a it's based on a book series about that based on in history, but it's actually a reboot on the the nineteen eighty TV series. And that's it. It was re, it's been released on February twenty seventh. Exclusive, exclusively released on Disney Plus. What do I think of it? I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty good. Has a lot of violence, dark. A lot of it's a pretty dark series, so it has a lot of violence scene. Something that Marvel really needs to go back to, of course. Yeah, this is not. This is when Disney doesn't gets involved with that series. Mm-hmm. I think it's. Uh, I think that series is a bit independent. Yeah. I think some independent company yeah. directed it. Mm-hmm. So I would recommend watch on if you, whatever you, if you get, whatever you guys have spare time. I would recommend watch the series of Shogun. Yeah, it's pretty. It's Same. pretty good. You you be entertained on me. It's not no. no. That's I, okay. I, I'll, I'll watch it. You can watch it. That's fine. Yeah, it's interesting series. Yep. You'll like it because it's dark, a lot of violent. It does have some blood and gore. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Mahala, you want to talk about... There's one you want to talk about, um... About about a gaming topic, hey? The Xbox Series X Hypers. Hyperkin. It's, I, I find it... Oh, yeah, it's a... Hang on. Is that something you want to talk about, Mahali? Um, yep. Yeah, um, I want to talk about, um, the Xbox... Series X, um... Hang on, just pre- Can you just press the link? Yep. The, the... Like, um, the Xbox controllers, like the 360, are, are back. Yeah, making a... I didn't, I didn't expect... I wasn't expecting that, though. Me too. They're making a... A comeback. Same. When I was a kid, I liked um, the, the 360 white controller. Yeah, the 360 controller was the best for the, for the Xbox, in my opinion. Same. I wasn't, I wasn't a big fan of the Xbox One controller. Me too. Or the Series X. Yeah. But it, do, it doesn't feel comfortable, but the 360 version feels, feels comfortable. Like you said, Mahali, it's a miracle. Yep, it is a miracle. I want to get the white version, though. Same. But the black, the black version looks good too. Yep, I like both of them. Yeah, I'll get both. Hope you all enjoy that Xbox Series X wire controllers. Yeah, I will, and that means I can play Mortal Kombat, Halo, pretty much any games I like. Mhm. Even good for playing playing Max Payne Three. Yeah. Yeah, that's a comeback. I wish they make a wireless though, instead of wired controller. What about you? Yeah. 
and put some rechargeable batteries. Yeah. Not some disposable batteries. Yeah. Oh, you can charge those two those double A batteries, but you have to buy a charger. Yeah. I'll just I I bought I bought a, a rechargeable battery pack for for this for my Series X controllers. It's like it's only like thirty dollars from JB Hi-Fi. Well, well, the thing is, Nick. Speaking about a play control, the play the play control of the PS Plus. Mine, I mean the PS Five. I meant to say is that it doesn't. There's no battery inclusion. It's just you just charge it and that was it. Whatever you want. Yeah, that, that's even. Yeah, PlayStation idea was better, but but the Xbox they still do double A batteries was stupid. I think you know they should really give up the battery thing and just do the same thing like what the what Sony is doing, just charge your controls and that's it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Just- and I don't I don't like um the batteries that you have to put in like the three sixty and other Xbox controllers. Yeah, you have to keep wasting money buy some bell double A batteries. Yeah, I'm not a fan of those those controllers. I prefer the controllers when you that you don't need battery and use a charger. Exactly. I, I prefer those ones and the ones with batteries, it's a waste of money. I know, it's just not good for the environment too. I mean, who would want to waste money? I mean, that's not good either, of course. No. Play, PlayStation doesn't doesn't do that on on the controllers. I guess it's cheap for for micro, for, for Microsoft to re- to put to include double I batteries instead of rechargeable controllers. But now you now you have to spend thirty dollars just to buy a rechargeable battery pack. Stupid. Mm. Yeah. They could just make make it like Manoli said exactly. Just make it re- just chargeable controllers. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, Nintendo does it too. Yeah. Nintendo Switch. Yeah, Nintendo Switch does as well. And 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 the and the Wii version. Oh, Wii's Wii's double A batteries. Yes. Wii doesn't exist anymore. Uh, Wii's is complete. It's discontinued a long time. Exactly. And I, I don't care. But I do like... I think Nintendo is the best... Nintendo Switch is the best Nintendo console so far. Yep. Although I'm not a huge fan of the... The Joy-Cons. Same. Doesn't feel comfortable in my hands. But I did put a good controller, hey? Yes. Mm-hmm. And next time, if we're ever going to have fun again, we need to start playing another game instead of Super, Super Smash Brothers. Hmm. Mario Kart? Yes. Yep. Try something different, something new. Or maybe I could bring. Maybe I could bring my PlayStation or an Xbox if I wanted to, so we could play Tekken. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good plan. That's something we can. I'm mean, probably play Mortal Kombat as well, but not make sure making sure there's no kids around. Yeah. I I I, I can see I can see the the purpose that there was a kid and we couldn't play Mortal Kombat, and I understand that. Yeah, I just don't want. To. No, don't, 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 don't. I just don't want to influence. I don't want to influence the child. Yeah, yeah. like don't want them put them put in their minds yeah, yeah. because it, it it is a nightmare for them. I, I I can see I can see that, but I'm trying to say generally, instead of playing Super Smash Bros, we could also play on other Mario things related, like Mario Kart. Yeah, unless unless that parent is is okay with it. Mario Kart game. No, is- no, I mean, a games that. For mature audience, you've got to have parents' permission. Yeah. If a parent's okay with it. Well, Mario Kart is okay. There's nothing Yeah, it's wrong. fine. It's fine. But when it comes to games that has more, like a mature audience. It's a different story. Different story. Yeah, you're going to have to ask parents' permission. You can't just. That's, yeah, yeah. We can't just push put, children. Put, put the child's thoughts. Yeah. But as I said this before. We could also play Mario Kart, and that's totally fine. Kids are okay with that. They need to make another fighting game. Yeah. That's for for the family. Yeah. Actually, Zelda's pretty good. Yep. Yeah. I like Zelda. Yep. Yeah. I also like Donkey Kong. Same. Oh, I do like play, replaying some games. Yeah. Same. Me too. I replay them when I get bored. Yeah, me too. Well, recently I did bought Tekken 8 though on my PS5 because I decided to wait. I decided to wait. Um, It was released on, what, January 26th, was it? 
and nothing. And you had to wait when when the price gets um bit lower. Yeah, I didn't like because I thought that the price was ridiculous, hundred twenty four dollars. Yes. And I only bought it like what seventy eight, seventy nine dollars. That's cheap. Yeah. It's a better price. And you know who's my favorite character in, in Taken series? King. Same. He's my favorite too. Yep. One of my favorite characters. I just do like I in my opinion I do like Taken I like Taken more than Mortal Kombat. Same. The fighting, the music. Yep. The stages is is awesome. Yep. Yeah, okay. Maybe we should move on top next topics, right? Yes, we shall. Just I'm just going to bring on the topic. Uh, yep, take your time. In. How's it done? How's it done? Okay, let me just try and bring the comment up. I'll just put it right here. Paste. Okay. So, my t it's my topic now. Yep, go ahead. So the topic that I wanted to share today, guys, is a YouTube person known as Randy Star, the Danny Phantom YouTube killer, of course. Mm -hmm. And here's a link on Wikipedia that I shared. Okay. Let me check. Danny, Danny Phantom, okay. You're you going to search for it? Hang on. Let me start again. Hang on, I'll, I'll, I should. Eaton Township. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, Randy Starr was a YouTube person at the time, alongside with everybody else, such as, you know, one of the icons that are now very well known, like, um, James Wolfe, the Angry Video Game, also known as the Scene Massacre Universe, and he is still doing great. And he also had special guests in some of the episodes, like Macaulay Culkin for Home for doing a review of the bad Home Alone games, mm -hmm. and other special guests like Gilbert Godfrey and stuff. But and this guy had a poster of it signed mm -hmm. by the actual guy James Wolfe. Mm -hmm. And what happened is, is that this guy motivate and believe that he would be reincarnated as an anime female ghost based upon a character from Danny Phantom. Mm -hmm. And, and he has been doing terrible things on social media and also willingness to commit suicide, oh, which sorry. Yep. willingness to commit suicide, which is a very sad thing, of course. Uh -huh. And the character that he fell in love with, like we said before, when it comes to this having a crush on a cartoon character is a character named Amber McLean from the iconic from a Nickelodeon anime series Danny Phantom, which was created by Butch Hartman and was also and also but well known for creating the none other, the filial parents. And this and he became obsessed with the character Steer had written earlier on online journal that he wanted him to kill, which is a very sad thing, which is of course now the truth is, we know it's wrong. And look, mm -hmm. when I was back then, yeah, I fell in love with cartoon characters, but I wasn't going to do some stupid things, of course. Uh -huh. And I wasn't going to make the bad decisions. And that's not how it is. But And he wanted to be a cartoon. He wanted to be in his cartoon character form. And is this some sort of a reference, Nick? I don't know. I never heard of like this. As if, like as if he... Do you know what it's like? No. Like as if, like, you know, Judge Doom from Roger Rabbit. I'm not sure. I never heard of this. Well, it's kind of like... This incident. A, yeah, but it's like as if that reference he's making, like, in the same vein as Judge Doom, you know, because Judge Doom is a, is a tune, of course. Mm -hmm. Don't you find it strange? Mm, kind of. And the only thing that... And I also read people's comment and some people say about having a crush on a cartoon character like Jessica Rabbit and stuff, which is a reference, but speaking of interacting with cartoon characters, that's what I said before, when it comes to metaverse, you would definitely meet them, of course. Yep. And that's... And he actually 
wrote inappropriate stuff on the diary and shared out to the media, like saying inappropriate words, like disability slur stuff, which is the R word, which is not a nice word, of course. Oh, yeah, that was, oh, okay. But it's important to understand between what's real and what's not real, of course. And I understand very well. Yep. And I would never do anything like that on Facebook. And I never do any stuff like that. And I have good friends like Lenny Manella and Andy Gavin, the mm -hmm. founder of Nordic. And I never, and I'm very good with these people. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. That's what I got to explain. Okay. So the next thing is, now my next topic will be uh, people getting laid off from Act Activision's and losing their jobs. And the United Nations does nothing. And it's not just Activision and also other well-known places. Mm -hmm. Are you following this, Nick? Yeah, I'm listening. The problem is, is that in Hollywood, in California and Los Angeles, people are losing a lot of jobs from Los Angeles and people are struggling no matter what kind of jobs they're trying to find it's very hard and the United Nation does nothing about it which is really sad because the biggest um, risk would be if that if they don't go to other places to look for a great job mm -hmm. they would end up in the street they would end up in poverty and one thing that nobody wants to have in Darwin is we don't want them to come as refugees and live in the street. Yep. So the best thing is, is that I think the United Nation should take the equity and inclusion and use it as a tool to help them out and maybe put some laws and say, hey, we're going to accept them to come to Australia and migrate and get jobs, of course. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be so wonderful. Maybe they could work at um, JB, the good guys, maybe have them. They're so talented. They can start having a job any time and it would work very well of course yep and 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 if the united nation knows about that then they're involved with it and they will deal with it but they need to start understanding what they need to do and the thing is the way the government the australian government should do it is that they need to bring them in in a positive way and welcome them not in a negative way like bring them here as refugees that that's a terrible thing. They need to be brought in like everybody else. Uh, mm -hmm. It would be much better, you know. They could share their story. They could actually spread an awareness saying for those who are about telling their stories about what happens behind closed doors, unhealthy work experience, and what well, I meant to say work in place, workplaces and stuff, and that would make a lot of changes, of course. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on that, guys? No, I'm not sure about this one. Yeah. Well, the point is, I think it would the point of having them here so that way things can be much easier and having better people instead of having terrible employees and having bad service. Yeah, I'm not sure, but mm. United Nations would do that. Yeah, me too. But what I'm trying to say for those who got laid off, I think it would be so much better if they migrate to down and maybe get a job at the good guys and jb one located in casuina square one located where nycliffe is mm -hmm. and for them who are very talented they can work and including my relatives who are very very distant mm -hmm. that worked in lord of the rings and stuff they can work there as well the american turkish descent which is i'm half turkish and i think it would be better if they were given a chance mm. and a peaceful agreement and that's what i gotta say about that now okay so what is the next thing guys next thing what's the next topic the next topic i want to share is the now we talked about grand theft auto before but i wanted to share this unique topic and mm -hmm. despite that australia cannot distinct between what is fiction and reality and instead of you know focusing on the economy they start they spend wasting too much time wasting their energy throwing their australian laws and policy to to fantasy when they should be focusing in real life and it's known as Australia's Grand Theft Problem with Grand Theft Auto. Mm -hmm. Nick, do you remember what happened? What, with Grand Theft Auto? What Australia did when it came to Grand Theft Auto. I think when it was back in 2014, I think Australia's Target and Kmart 
back then did ban Grand Theft Auto Five. I think that's quite due very, to due to violence against women. I think that's quite very stupid because this is a fictional game and it's not real. Yeah, I think it's been acu- Rockstar has been accused of what like misogynist or something. I think Rockstar should really ignore it and maybe do something about it and. Grand Theft Auto is just a game and the purpose of having the Australian laws and policy was for reality stuff. Well, the authoritarianism, sorry Nick, to interrupt. Yep. The authoritarianism towards fantasy and fiction doesn't work. The purpose of having these things so that way we can obey them and follow them. But when it comes to with when they do it towards games, people ain't going to tune in. Yeah, well, well, got news for them. Hmm? Grand Theft Auto Six has a female character to play as. Oh yeah, I, I'm, and I went to uh, triv- trivia, and it says that this female—I don't know her name—will be is the very first time. It's not like the director's cut in GTA Five. It's not like that. It's Lucia, actually, yeah, her name, officially Lucia. Yeah, yeah. This is an official playable character, and we did say you know we want to change clothes. Yeah. Also, give us the ability to kill some animals and skin them. Yeah. That's a great feature. Yeah, and Lucia is Latina. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I think she's Cuban because I think I know in real, in real life in mm-hmm. in Miami, mm-hmm. the a lot of population has like with Cubans. Yeah. Now the question is, if if this is an issue, then how come Australia isn't focusing on the real problem or dealing with real issues? If Australia has got is sensitive with these violence, then they. Then there are real issues that they need to deal with first, such as educating themselves, of course. Mm-hmm. That's what they need to do. Yeah. And that's what I gotta say about that. Yeah. And oh, I, was, I almost forgot though with Godzilla and Kong. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm I'm done. Just. You know, one thing I didn't pay attention when the movie sings me Holly. You know how Kong isn't is not scared. You know, sorry. You know how Scar King. He abused his own people and and abused Shimo. Yeah, and then and then makes fun of Kong. You know one thing. His weakness, Godzilla. Yeah, that's his weakness. Remember that scene. Remember the scene when Godzilla and Kong entered Holy Earth, the final battle. Yep. And we heard Godzilla's roar. He made like a shocked face. Yeah, like he was scared because he know he. Because he knew Godzilla from the past. Because Godzilla beat him. Yeah. And banish him to the deep hollow earth with his tribe. Yeah, I, I didn't like the part um, Scott King was was laughing at him at at Kong. Yeah, well, I think we said that. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, yep. Okay. And um. Oh yeah, I hate that part. He kicked he kicked the ape to the lava. Yeah. And you know, who he reminds me of. He reminds me of Koba. Yeah. The personality. He's yeah. a psychopath. Yeah. And also, one of those apes, his loyal minion, looks like um, Koba from Planet of the Apes. Yeah. Because he looks like a bonobo. Yeah. You know what? You know what first thing I do? What I'm going to do when Godzilla Kong, the new empire, gets released on, you know, DVDs, Blu-rays, digital platforms. What, what could it be, Nick? I want to buy on Blu-ray. Same. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Buy yeah. Blu-ray. Yeah, have my collection. Yep, same. Have it for a collection, and it was it was a great it was a great movie. I enjoyed it. Well, I, well, that's your opinion, guys. That's fine. I do. Yeah, it's most pretty much. It's been a decent movie for me for this year so mm-hmm. far. Yeah, and um, Scott Scott King. He 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 can't beat um Kong and Godzilla. Nope. Sorry to interrupt you guys. I also forgot to say until it was in my head. Of yeah, course. go ahead. Well, what I wanted to say is, okay, is that look, it's just a video game. And it cannot hurt you. Yeah, I understand. Mm-hmm. Violence, everyone in this planet has to deal with conflict, but it's a video game, so there's nothing to worry about. People hurt people. Yeah, it's just a game. There's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that. And for the most part of Grand Theft of GTA, and when it comes to the latest one, is that you know something else, guys? What? Well, here's an example. Let's say that if I was going to EB Games, and when I discover something that 
includes the Australian content, like the rain and stuff, mm -hmm. you know what I would do? What? I'm not going to get it. Okay. You know why? Why? Because of the Australian content that's put in and the changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the only thing I do instead of that, I might as well just go to eBay and get the American one instead. Yeah. What do you think of that, Nick? If you approach a game that... Yeah. If you approach something that Australia did that was not very good, you just, what you do is you just say, no, I'm not going to get that because of this. We just get, just get the game from America off from eBay and make sure you find a good price. Okay. Is, is that a great solving problem? Yeah, it's like how people buy more combat back in 2011. Yeah, the, the same as more combat. Let's not forget about Yeah, in, in 2011, I think people in, who lived in Australia had to get it from eBay, from America. You know, you know, Nick, sorry to interrupt you, you know that that's what I was just thinking as well about Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. I was saying this in my head. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get a game that comes with the Australian content. No way. I'm just going to get off from America instead. Yeah. So, shall we wrap it up? Yep. There's one last one. What's T1000s? T1000s is a um, code that stands for transracial, of course. Okay. Is that a thing or are you... Well, actually... No, um, I mean the T T1000s. Well, T1000 was named after by a character from Terminator Judgment Day, and I'm using that as a code, which stands for transracial, of course. It is a... Um, it's a concept where people who are born and wanted to change their appearance, mm -hmm. despite that they have no distant or have any heritage and they like to fake their identity and stuff, like that guy from England who wanted to become Korean. Oh and, yeah, I heard that. I heard that topic before. And that's why we're coming up with a new pr pronunciation for transracials. Mm -hmm. T1000s. There we go. Because T1000 changes his appearance to other characters, and that's why we're coming up with this code. And that is, and it's known as the T1000s. Yeah. And T stands for transracial. Yeah, I found, I found the guy you were talking about. I want to, I want to look it up and run. Ollie London, that's his, that's his name. Yes, it certainly is. He was a, Br a Brit he's a British man. He was born a British man. That, that, exactly right. That's why I was saying that too. And then trying to look like one of those K Korean K-pop singers or something but when i when it comes to these things it's not just korean some people want to change skin color it it has a lot of meaning but i'm not going to do that you can't do it i'm not going to go under the knife and be asian i'm not going to change my skin color from white to black i mean if that's, you if that's you silly if you decide to be trying to go get a surgery to look like asian you, you're not actually a born asian no or black either and that's you're a, that's that's a terrible thing because Michael Jackson did the, the thing where he went from black to white, but I think that's really ridiculous, and I think it's, it's disrespectful to the original skin color you were. Yeah, transracial. What a nightmare. But I think it's disrespectful. When I'm just going to finish the topic. I think it's very disrespectful for someone to change their skin color from black to white or white to black, and I think it's disrespectful to what the original skin color you were, of course. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, yeah. I mean, I understand, very, and I'm not trying to be racist, and I'm not trying to discriminate towards the ones. I'm just trying to be giving you the message of what's right and wrong, of course. Yeah, but I just don't agree with this. I just, just don't agree the whole idea that we have to play along then a white person has... No, not just that. Not a white person decides to change to look like Asian. We have to identify him as Asian now. Well, I think that's quite very wrong because, and that's why in this day and age we're using that, the T1000 as a code. As I said again, I'm using the word T1000 to stand for transracial, of course, as a code. Yeah. And that's how it is. And that's all I got to explain. And hopefully for those out there in Darwin or Melbourne, hopefully that they'll understand and for them to study these things before they argue about it. Yeah. All right, I think I had enough with this podcast. Yeah, what about me you? too. Same. You want to wrap it up? Let's just say a very special thanks to the audience for listening to that. Mm -hmm. And hope they understand these topics. Yeah. 
All right. The A-team is out. The A-team is out? Yeah. Right. This is the way. This is the way.